All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Hello, this is Ken. This is the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm losing my mind already here. The Ken Show. I can't even go. It's the Ken Show. Um, this is the podcast episode 372. Uh, today, joining me is Lonnie, as usual, What's St. Up? Louis Kiss. And coming back again is Andrew Scambetti, a live cat man on the board. How are you doing? Uh, I, I'm doing deliriously good. That's good. All right. <laughs> so, again... Uh, Julian's not here. Mark is uh, very busy. Um, and Julian's, you know, taking a well-deserved vacation. So um, we're just going to get right into it with some KISS news. Um, first of all, uh, there was news that KISS canceled the Boise uh, concert. Um, and I think that's because, from what I understand, uh, it's a COVID, you know, breakout in that area. Yeah, I did read a news story that there was a significant spike in the Boise, Idaho area. Uh, for those who don't know, it was an indoor show scheduled for September 21st, so it was canceled. Initially, when we became aware of the cancellation, which was right through the Ticketmaster app, no other places had reported this at that point. People that were going to the show were just getting notifications from Ticketmaster that it was canceled. Now, I was at another show when this started happening, so I just assumed at the time, I was like, man, are they just going to start canceling indoor shows because they're worried about possible COVID exposures? Mm -hmm. uh, but so far, that hasn't been the case. So far, they've only canceled the Boise, Idaho show because apparently the local government in Boise um, identified a significant COVID spike. So so there you have it. So uh, as far as that, no other news. Ha did any of you see any official word from KISS uh, other than just cancellation? I've not. I don't recall seeing any official words from Kiss on that one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was on their uh, website um, about that or not. Um, uh, I'm not sure. It could have been, but I didn't. I didn't notice it. Or I haven't been visiting their sites enough to what? Uh, check that. I know she's. You know, I should be on like, you know, ten times a day, right? Um, <laughs> Only one that's like the day or the day before the show is when I log on. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, listen, I was there in, in Pittsburgh slash Burkittstown when they canceled it, and I was literally standing at the gate when they turned us away. Yeah, that's so kind of scary. That was awful. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. yeah. If I actually go to the Burkittstown show uh, October 13th, I'll come back on, and then I'll share like the whole story so that way you don't hear it twice. Okay, cool. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, other news, um, Record Store Day, Aerosmith has a i know it's not kiss but aerosmith has got a cool uh um record store day release which is before their first album uh i think it's a sound check or or demos or something like that um but i'm it's gonna be on black friday and you know kiss could take Places. advantage of this stuff um there's a lot of stuff out there that they can do and put out i mean it's it's not that difficult, I don't think. They don't have to go in and record any new music. Um, I think a lot of the things we're running up against now is the current bottleneck pipeline in a lot of vinyl production, just yeah. because, uh, just because of the the blowback of a lot of things being shut down last year and a lot of goods being difficult to obtain last year for production. So I think we're dealing with a lot of that at this point. So who knows how long this had been in the works? You know, we yeah. don't know. Who, I mean, who would have thought that you know, vinyl would have taken off so well like this? I mean, it's just it's just keep, keeps going, increasing, increasing. And they can't keep up with it now. Um, there's not enough plants out there either. So, not enough plants, not enough, uh, you know, raw materials, yeah. and sh yeah. and not enough shipping at this point in time. So, uh, you know, it's it, it's weird. So, and furthermore, too, you know, a lot of these people that are buying these fifteen dollar and twenty five dollar vinyl records from walmart that's kind of hurting the smaller guys that are trying to pump out these True. these boutique shops these collections so 
Um, Because a lot of people are like, well, why am I going to buy this if I can get the same record at fifteen dollars at Walmart? So it's 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 a weird it's a weird time to be a music fan and music collector. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, 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 Also, um, there was a blurb this week that Paul said that uh, I don't know where it was. I can't remember where it was from, but. Paul had said that they, you know, they, the reason they turned Van Halen away for, you know, from Casablanca, they didn't sign him, is because it, to protect Kiss and 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 rein in, you know, rein Gene back in, um, kind of thing, you know, don't want to. Do you think that's revisionists' history, or do you think that's actually how it happened? You know, uh, <laughs> I, I think, I think. Was it Bill Coin really wasn't interested, in my opinion, um, and and I I don't know it that could have been part of it, you know, uh, you know Gene don't want him you know focusing too much on you know Van Halen and starting to promote other bands and just stick to Kiss. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I think I tend to think that when new information comes out about events that took place 40 years ago, I think it, it is a little bit of revisionist history more than anything else. <laughs> yeah. What I was getting at on that yeah. is when they're like, oh, we didn't see it with Van Halen. Well, Van Halen at, at several points in their career were the biggest band of all time. So yeah. I think in order to not make them look out of touch, they go, oh, yeah, we thought they were too good. Bullshit! You thought they were too good. <laughs> nobody, nobody <laughs> liked them when they initially saw them. Uh, maybe because they thought that they were going to surpass Kiss. But let's on their own real. Label. Yeah. Let's be real here. By the time uh, Van Halen was headlining arenas in '78, '79, they were outselling Kiss like four to one. Correct. Just facts. That's true. That's true. Facts on the Fact Podcast. So <laughs> there you go. Very good point. <laughs> um, and uh, also, this past week on the on the twelfth of uh, September, here just a few days back, um, they had the Metal Hall of Fame inductions, and uh, the Kiss related inductions was you know Doc McGee, Bill Coyne, Bruce Kulick, and uh, Eric Carr. So uh, you know, well deserved. They should be in there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, this is so. kind of taking that place of that uh, VH1 Rock Honors that was around in the early to mid 2000s, where uh, you know they were honoring those legacy bands, Kiss, Def Leppard, Queen, kind of the bands that m- some of them might be in the Rock Hall now, but kind of the bands that the Rock Hall was ignoring mm-hmm. at that point in time. So uh, you know you have this, and you have like the Metal God Awards. I mean, it's just it's another award show. It's just a reason to celebrate this these bands and celebrate these people it is well deserved and i think the people that got inducted as far as kiss related goes they deserve every every bit of it you know bruce kulik eric carr all those guys they their uh contributions not only to kiss but to music uh second to none yeah definitely yeah absolutely very deserving you know good for good for them they got ignored by the hall but if them to get some recognition. Yeah, they should be yeah. in the hall too, but you know, that's Agreed. another story. Agreed. That's <laughs> another podcast. That's another podcast episode and more. Um, okay, and uh, one other thing I'll touch on. Um, I was able, fortunately, to see Kiss last week in Mountain View, uh, California at the Shoreline Amphitheater. And uh, it was really, really good. I mean... I think that's probably the close. Even though I'd been in a club and saw Kiss in a club, I was closer. I think I, I was closer to them at on the front row of, of the Shoreline than I was in the club, um, which is you know surprising. Uh, but it, it was really really good. I mean, yeah, there was I did the, the VIP stuff and all that, and there's a lot of waiting around, a little bit of unorganization. Uh, mm-hmm. You don't say. Unorganized stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, there was, fortunately, the, the what do you want to call it, the, the acoustic thing, uh, the pre-unplug uh, kind of thing that they did beforehand, um, it was only three songs. I think they mm. got to it really late, and there's only three songs, and then there was, you know, some uh, questions uh, from the from the crowd in between the songs. Um What's your favorite color? Yeah. What's your favorite guitar? Yeah, something like that. But there, there was one. Yeah. 
there's one very cute kid and this is this is just classic and so innocent little kid i think it's the one that was in in gene simmons costume and makeup um he he said are you going to use your uh your superpowers on stage are you going to be using your superpowers and I, and he was serious and i was i just thought that was the greatest thing i just thought i thought yeah he's, they're going to use their superpowers well, you know gene's going to say cool. gene's going to breathe fire and all that stuff and he is he actually is is going to breathe fire right? yeah he's not he's going to he's going to ascend on a pod not flying no more yeah yeah so uh i thought that was kind of a, a cute thing by the uh, by the kid um so at the concert itself it was just great of course you know being at the kids concerts it's always always cool and then i said that i i had uh i got some pics and stuff like that i posted on facebook but you know the the gene simmons uh i still don't have one of those I'm hoping, this is the first time i got that one i mean i'm hoping really, to get one i could put I'm it next to, to my creatures of the night gene simmons pic you know that's there i just rub it in there really. i know just I just take put that. that there <laughs> and then the other thing run. yeah the very surprising thing i mentioned about it with this the connection with uh Eric Singer is the the sticks. Oh, hold on. No. You got some too? Yeah. No. He's, he's got more than a few, I'm sure. I'm sure. He does, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, same ones. Same ones. Yeah. So, uh, tell me this. Do they get really beat up in the middle of the stick at the after Yeah, the yeah, show? because everything is, a, everything is a rim shot. Yeah, yeah. So, you can see it. It's like it's, it, well, you can't see it here. It's probably too small, but it's, it's chipping away. Yeah, or you know, same with mine. like yeah, yeah, yeah. splintering all, in the, the, in the middle. And... Like that, or like that too. I'm not a drummer like Andrew. We're not drummers like Andrew. But no, no, yeah. All the ones I've caught from from shows that they're always so. Good, but... Yeah, I was very, very uh, fortunate and and happy that Eric came over to me and, and placed the the sticks in my my hand. <laughs> um, so that that really was a cool show and probably my last. Um, I keep saying that, um, but the uh, you know the. I, I guess if they came back to San Francisco, you're not gonna you're one not more gonna time. Plane, there is you're not gonna get I, on a plane and go to the last show in New York City. You're not gonna do that. I don't know. I'll have to wait if you say no. I know you you, you co-host a Kiss podcast <laughs> and you're on I a Kiss know. message board. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna go to the last show. You are. And a, a special guest like Ace and uh, Peter. You no, know, even no, even you know, without. Yeah, Come on. The, no way. We'll you're see. gonna do it. You're gonna do it. Okay, well, it's, it's we'll anything's possible. I won't say, you know, it won't happen. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see whenever it, whenever they do decide to uh, hang it up, right, at this mm -hmm. point. All right, so last week we had talked about another book, uh, which is the uh, uh, Allen's book last week. Um, this week we're going to talk about the, the Kiss Army Spain. Was it Kiss Army Spain, right? Yep. Kiss Army Spain fan club package book. Oh, there you go. You got it right there in front of you. Um, 1977 to 2019. Right. And which I just ordered. I think there's not many left, but I just ordered earlier this week, finally. Right. Um, you can visit kissarmyspain.com, but actually if you just do a Google search of Kiss Army Spain destroys Madison Square Garden, it'll take you right to the actual page. You'll have to email one of the lads that are associated with this book. Email them directly, and then they'll uh, they'll get that PayPal link over to you. Uh, I don't know what the what the price is on this anywhere. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. But if they are sold out, I know there are limited copies available through uh, KissMuseum.com. So uh, oh. visit KissMuseum.com. They might have some there. The great Peter Arquette has a has a couple in stock there as of yesterday. Uh, uh, but again, if you're watching this, please, please, please don't take my word for it. Uh, check both of those sites before before you uh, before you order on these because I know there's not a whole lot around these, uh, but it is an absolutely great book, and we'll talk about it more here in a minute. Yeah, so so this book, uh, which looks really good, and and I think it's like a thousand pictures or something like that in there. Um, uh, so how did you, uh, uh, Andrew, get in, involved in in this? Yeah, you. How did you get, yeah. become involved in this this uh, project well, or book? Well, before we talk about that, okay. I want to talk about their previous release. I want to talk about their previous release on the Paul Stanley solo tour. Oh yeah, nineteen eighty nine. This is the same guys that put this book out. So, 
Um, when I had my own podcast, I, I became aware of this book and somebody was actually nice enough to send me a copy of this. I didn't purchase this. I certainly would have because this is awesome too. Uh, but someone was really gracious and sent me this. The only weird thing about this book is, uh, it is flawlessly designed information in here is great. There's a lot of cool pictures and a lot of cool stories in here. I mean, it's like, it's just like a, a giant scrapbook. But Mm -hmm. the weird thing about this book is the pages are kind of stuck together with some static. So I think I got to put like a dryer sheet or two in this book. It's the oddest thing I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> or anti one of those anti-static uh, guns, uh, LP guns. Yeah, you know? yeah. So it's it's the weirdest thing. But aside from that, this is a great book, and it gives a lot of information on this uh, this Paul Stanley solo tour, which is the first of two solo tours that he did. So um, I know they they just recently reprinted maybe a dozen of these to go along with the other release, the Destroy the Madison Square Garden book. So email them as well for that they may have a copy left they may or may not um if they don't you're just gonna have to look on a secondary market on ebay or any other kiss trading sites that might have a copy available but this was cool this was kind of my introduction to these uh these guys in kiss army spain obviously being in the Mm -hmm. united states you know i'm not really up on any of the fan clubs in any of the other states or countries rather right so i became aware of them this and then i kind of heard some rumblings that they were going to be doing another book and which is Kiss destroys Madison Square Garden. Which look at look at how thick this book is. I mean, this is that's this is pretty a pretty good sized book that, yeah. that goes. Yeah. That's basically almost you know forty years of history in this book. Um, anybody that knows me or anybody that has seen any of the things that I've done, they know that I have this really you know uh, re- deep relationship with New York City. I saw Kiss in New York twice in ninety eight and two thousand three. Originally from New Jersey, so oh, knowing right. that okay. I was kind of walking on these same streets. Uh, Mauricio, one of the guys in Kiss Army Spain, reached out to me and he was putting the book together. He says, hey, I'm, we're working on this book. Do you have any pictures or information for it? And I was like, yeah, I, I think I got some stuff. But when I started looking through my collection, I had tickets and you know, pamphlets from you know, certain concerts, T-shirts and everything. I was, like, I was like, hey, I have a lot of stuff. And then I also have a lot of newspaper articles from the 70s Madison Square Garden appearances. So I'll, I'll send you all that too. And he goes, well, weren't you at two of the, sh- weren't you at a couple of the shows? And I was like, yeah, I was at two of the shows, so I can kind of write you a review hmm. uh, on these shows. And and he just kept on bouncing ideas off me. He goes, what if we did this? What if we did that? My designer does this, or do you have this, or can you help me find that? So basically, he would message me once or twice a week asking for information or asking for stuff, and I would scour eBay or I would look around and anything they needed, I, I'd help him out with. So after I'd given him all this information, all these pictures, all this stuff. I was like, I was like, hey man, I go, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but do you think I could maybe write like a prologue? Because I'm such a huge, I'm a huge Kiss fan, obviously, like we all are, but I feel especially connected to this because um, I lived in New Jersey and I romanticized New York City my entire life. So he said, sure, sure. I had no idea at the point, I had no idea at that point that the book was going to be like this. I thought the book was going to be something similar to this, where it was like going to be like basically like yeah, a magazine. A smaller. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had no, I had no idea it was going to be some, like a monster like this. That's nice and thick, it really is. It, it that's what she said. That's um, exactly. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I had no idea that you'd be looking, that I'd be looking through the book, and there's a foreword written by Chris Lent, who oh, worked yeah. for the band for for many years. Mm-hmm. So when I first open the book and I'm looking at the forward from Chris Lent, I go, oh, well, they didn't use mine. I go, no hard feelings. I go, Chris Lent, he was in, he was traveling with the band right. throughout a lot of the stories in this book. I go, I get it. Chris Lent, that's the guy. That's the guy you want. If you're a Kiss fan and you got to be a Kiss fan to buy this book and not just a casual Kiss fan, you're, you're a dire Kiss fan, you know who Chris Lent is. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, awesome. So I read his introduction. I go, that was super cool cool pictures. I was like, that's awesome. And then I turned the page and they gave me this great spread where it's a picture of me with kiss in 2017. I think it is. Then there's the, the inlay of me with, uh, with, with Gene. So I I just want to read the the first paragraph uh, of this because I think for people that don't have the book and and again, you can get the book right through kiss army, Spain, or you can go to kissmuseum.com for limited uh, quantities on this but the first paragraph and, and i kind of started with a peter chris quote i go uh this is new york yo <laughs> <laughs> growing up in new jersey i was infatuated with everything relating to new york city the internet was brand new the flow of information was much slower 
and I seemed to have spent countless hours in front of the TV. All the major news stations were set to New York City. Many of my favorite TV shows and movies were set there, and my favorite band, Kiss, hailed from New York City. So that just kind of ties everything together because growing up, I mean, Friends was on NBC, Seinfeld was on NBC, Mad About You, you know, all these all these other shows were set in New York City. I mean, even though Frasier was set in Seattle, it still felt like a New York City show, right. in my opinion. Yeah. But you, you heard about all these things and, you know, it's my guilty pleasure movie, Godzilla 1998, it's set in New York City. You mm-hmm. know, you heard about Broadway, the all these news channel four, all these things were set in New York City. And then I found out that Kiss came from New York City. I was like, hey, what could be better? This is a magical place. So I, I go over in this little forward about how when I first went to New York City on a school field trip, um, most of the kids were like, let's see the Empire State Building. Let's see this. And, that. and I was like, no, nah, man. I was like, I want to see Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and they're like, where the Why? where the Knicks play basketball? Why, <laughs> why do you want to see that? I didn't know you were a Knicks fan. <laughs> yeah. Which, no, I, was like, I was like, man, I was like, that's where Kiss played. And I remember the bus kind of drove past it. We never stopped, but I look at it and I was like, "There it is." And at the time, I, you know, I it might have been ninety five or, or maybe it was even ninety seven. I, I I couldn't tell you what the exact year it was, but I hadn't seen Kiss at the Garden yet because I saw Kiss at the Garden in ninety eight in the Psycho Circus tour. So um, to me, it just seemed like a magical place. This was hollowed ground. You know, you have your people who are super religious that go to the Vatican. Or you have your huge hockey fans that go to the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. Or your football fans go to the Football Hall of Fame in Canton. Mm -hmm. For me, the Concert Hall of Fame was Madison Square Garden. So having that connection, Mm -hmm. when I knew that the guys at Kiss Army Spain were going to be doing a book on Kiss's Madison Square Garden appearances, I was like, guys, i got to get involved. So just thumbing through the book, and and, you know, uh, I'm a 9 to 5 I've I got this book delivered to me on Monday. Uh, so I haven't read through it yet, so I do apologize. But I have just kind of skimmed through it, and I see a, a ton of my stuff in here. Um, I do have tickets to every Madison Square Garden show. I Indeed. didn't intend them, but that's kind of one of those things that I want Collected them. in the collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have every ticket of every Madison Square Garden appearance. So I see a ton of my tickets in here. Um, I do have event shirts from Madison Square Garden 96 and Madison Square Garden uh, 98. Uh, I even have some box office pamphlets. Even my Madison Square Garden bag that I got in 98 is in this book. I took a picture of that and, and I put it in this book. But, um, you know, it it's one thing hearing about the book, and it's a complete other thing getting it in hand and going, oh, my God, this is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And the the biggest sale point is not that this is a book. The sale point is that this is a fan club package. So included with this book your, is your Kiss Army Fan Club newsletters, and it's also – there's a, a great poster that I have put away, so I, I'm sorry, but the poster is just it, it, the cover clean with no writing or anything no, on that's... it. Freaking awesome. So these guys, they, they, know, they know how to do it. And, and just, looking through these, just looking through these pages, I'm like, man, I was like, look at all this cool – look at all these other newspaper articles that I got to find now <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't know about. Put you to work. It, seriously, it put me to work. And it's cool as I'm flipping through these pages, I'm seeing friends of mine, my really good friend Mike Namoli. He's all over this because he was a big Kiss fan. He's the New York Kiss Army guy that has a New York Kiss Army license plate. You see it in the mm-hmm. Shout Out Loud video. And you also mm-hmm. see it in Alive 96. So go watch that streaming on YouTube and Vimeo right now. Um, <laughs> but, um, but just going through this and just hearing about all the things that are in this book, especially when you get to the reunion years, I'm like, man, I was like, I was there. And it's it's so cool to to have this memory of these great times in my life. They, there's a quote that I, I want to read too out of here. It's in the it's in the Madison Square Garden uh, 2003 section mm-hmm. in the World Domination Tour. I said seeing Kiss in New York City again because we had all seen them, you know, before 2003. Seeing Kiss in New York City again felt like a rite of passage, and I don't think, even though it's my quote, I'm just not agreeing with it because it was me, but I don't think any truer words have been spoken as far as this band goes because everyone knows that seeing Kiss in a place like New York City or Detroit, it's mm-hmm. real special. Yeah. New York City obviously being their hometown, right, Detroit right. being that first place that kind of really caught on. So anytime 
I saw them in New York City, I was like, hey, man, this is cool. Uh, I I definitely regret not going to Madison Square Garden in 2019. I know Julian did, and mm-hmm. uh, you know you could you could go back to the to the Kiss FAQ podcast where Julian was talking about his show. Mm-hmm. Um, but just having these memories and having this book for those memories is freaking incredible. Yeah, I mean, just incredible. yeah, it's a big deal. I mean, Madison Square Garden has always been the big deal as far as Kiss themselves. Uh, you know. Wanted to come back and, and conquer a New York show that they, you know, they could make it big. That was their thing. Yeah, we really did make it. We that was, played Madison. That was Square. always the bar. That was, was the, bar the bar to get to get there and, and and you know sell out a Madison Square you know show. Well, if they sold out plenty of shows, especially at the beginning. Every single one. Yeah. Every so, single Madison Square show has been sold out. So it's it's a good. It's really a good idea by them to come up with that topic of just focusing on Madison. I mean, they could focus on more touring, you know, places and venues or whatever. But that focusing on Madison Square Garden is is a big deal, and it makes sense as far as you know, Kiss, uh, Kiss book. What's really cool about this is like in the book. How you're kind of going through, uh, you know, the different dates, whether it's on the Asylum tour, or the Hot in the Shade tour. Throughout this book, there's little interviews with some of the, you know, faculty of the band, some of the band's crews, and just other things are just in these little interviews that are like, you know, Kiss Army Spain exclusive interviews. Mm. And it just gives you just a little bit more information about what was going on at the time or, or anything really. Yeah. So, um, again, I haven't read through it just because, you know, um, for me, the weekend is my time to look at all this stuff. Right. Uh, but I have just, you know, thumbed through it the last couple nights in bed, just looking through the pictures and just looking through all this cool stuff. And I was like, man, I was like, this is, this is, this really is cool stuff. Um, one of my favorite pictures is right here. You know, that's my event shirt from Madison Square Garden. Yeah, exactly. Square, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and just going through, I'm looking at the tickets. I go, what number is that ticket? I go, oh, that's my ticket. You know, so <laughs> it, it, it was, it, it was cool seeing that. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the coolest thing in the book, my opinion. There's a full page ad. This is from the village voice in yeah. 1998. Yeah. I really want to get a that's copy nice. of that just, yeah. just cause I was there. That's cool. Um, I was there at, at that show, but I mean, this is something, this might be one of the centerpieces in, in my collection just because not only was I there at some of these events and not only did I help put the book together, but it's something cool. And uh, it's something that, that I've always felt connected to. My first Kiss bootleg ever was the uh, Madison Square Garden 77 show. Okay. I, bought at the, I bought at the Rothman Center Kiss Convention in 1998. Okay. And, that was the, and I still got that same, still got that same VHS tape that I bought then. I'll never get rid of it. Because this was that was my that was my next step into fandom. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at that point, like I said, there was no internet, so I couldn't go online. There's no YouTube. There's none of that shit. Yeah, so I had to go to that convention and buy that VHS tape. So, at every step of the way in my Kiss fandom, it's further solidified my um, obsession or further solidified my fascination with Madison Square Garden. Sure. Yeah. So when when you get the book, obviously it's going to go through all their dates. But what I thought was very cool is there is like a five or six page history on Madison Square Garden. They talk about when it was built. They talk about how uh, the capacity had changed for hockey games and basketball games. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes over what made this venue so special. Because when it was initially built, it it was called Madison Square Garden because it was on one – the block that it was on was a square mile. So okay. uh, it was yeah. so and it's one of the more famous arenas in the entire world too which is yes. so cool yeah yeah and, and it says it says basically it's the world's most famous arena right at, at, at that point and uh but it's it's uh it's cool to kind of get that history about it because you kind of understand why kiss um wanted to play there so bad being a new york band and, and they had seen other shows there um so it, i mean I mean, just imagine, I mean, in February 77, you had no idea that that show was going to be such a big deal. You were just like, oh, Kiss is coming to town. I saw him at the Beacon last year. I'm going to go see him at the Garden this year. Like, you, you didn't, when something like that was happening, you didn't understand. By the time they came back in 96 and they sold out four nights, mm-hmm. you knew that this Appreciate was... Appreciate it. You, exactly. Exactly. So there's actually a really cool documentary out there called Kiss Loves You. Oh, yeah. And, 
Yeah. Doesn't yeah. paint Kiss fans in the best light. No. <laughs> However, <laughs> for the band. <laughs> However, towards the end of the movie, there is a little bit of footage of fans outside Madison Square Garden in July of 96. Okay. So yeah. it's kind of cool to see stuff like that because it kind of takes you back in time. Um, because, I mean, you guys know, it's no, I mean, we know Lonnie loves revenge. Uh, I love the reunion tour. That was kind of my, that, I mean, when, pe- when people say, oh, yeah, this is my favorite era, that's like, the, the reunion tour, that's my era. Mm-hmm. So no, nobody else has claimed that era. That's my, that's my era. <laughs> and what's funny about that now is I have dealers and fans, and anytime someone finds something reunion tour, they go, oh, I got to tell Andrew about this. You know, just today I bought just a, a newspaper article, I don't know, from September 12th. I forget the city, but it's a big reunion tour newspaper uh, article. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But it's 96, and I was like, hey, do you want this? I was like, yeah, 10 bucks. So I'm like, cool, I want it. Just because I love that tour. That was a tour that changed my life. Yeah, well, Madison Square Garden, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I know when it first, you know, opened or whatever is way back. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like the state of the art thing and all the big acts wanted to play there. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Frank Sinatra obviously had some, you know, concerts there, uh, big deal. Um, and, and even fights, right? Uh, like Ali. Um, oh, yeah. There was definitely fights there. It was like the biggest, you know, the place to go, the place to have the 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 biggest, you know, show um, in town or the most, you know, important ones, in my opinion. Um, they said, no, we're not going to go to, uh, you know, Florida to play some arena there. They're, they can play, play in Madison Square Garden. That's where you mm-hmm. want to play. So. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I definitely, I definitely agree, and I know Billy Joel has a has a long standing oh, residency yes. at the Garden. Yeah, he and does. he just he just plays there once a month until, whenever he doesn't want Keeps to. Keep selling anymore. them out. How, how cool is that? It's amazing. You know, uh, and it's it's I I hate to repeat myself and keep saying that it's just cool, but it's just <laughs> something about this book has like a piece of history that sometimes Kiss overlooks. No, it, it's a very cool idea to do a book like that about Kiss at Madison Square Garden, playing the arena from their hometown, playing the arena that, that was always their, they always had their sights on in the early days. You know, you always hear these stories of, of like them having like a little huddle before they go on stage and Peter always saying, well, this is the garden, this is the garden. You know, go out mm-hmm. there like this is the garden tonight. You know, and then and they finally do it and and. February 77 and they play there multiple 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 times since then it's it was always the peak it was always the bar that that they were looking for they were never saying you know what I really want to play that arena in Chicago no it was it was Madison Square Garden that they wanted to play yeah I can't wait to play the Richfield Coliseum in Cleveland right I hear Kansas City has a really nice arena I really want to play there <laughs> I can't wait to play the Chicago nothing, nothing against Kansas City you've made it if you've done that in Kansas City yeah <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's weird too because you have one of their biggest attended shows at the time. Uh, they're playing like Atlanta Brave Stadium on the Destroyer Tour. Then you know, in July of '76, they're playing Roosevelt Stadium. And just when a band is playing stadiums, you're like, oh, they're playing to 50,000 people. But you think about it for a minute, you're like, well, the Garden only seats like 17 or 18,000, depending on what the setup is. So mm-hmm. if they're playing these stadiums in '76, why are they waiting until February '77 to play the Garden? So it, it was just, it was kind of that weird thing where mm-hmm. you know it, it it just the stars hadn't aligned at, at that point. Um, there is actually a, a cool little fact um, that Kiss almost played the Garden in '74. There was a, supposed to be a oh, really? world music festival that was going to be held at the Garden, and Kiss was going to be one of the acts that played there. Uh, the festival never happened, but mm-hmm. imagine in that 1974, is... the beginning of their career, they're opening oh. a show at the Garden. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that February show would have felt different. I know it would have been a headline show, but imagine you're a brand new band on the scene and you're already playing the arena that you wanted to play. Right. So um, that's just something I didn't hear about too often. It, it was one of those things that when I was reading a lot of documents around the um, the first Kiss tour, that there was some whole dates and, and you know some information on the World Music Fair. So uh, it never happened um, for one reason or the other, but um, it would have been cool if, if Kiss had played there at that point. And you kind of almost wonder, you're like, well, they would have played this world music fair. You that probably would have been captured professionally on video. Probably sure. that would have been cool. It, it, it would have been kind of like it is here in St. Louis, where any anytime I meet a Kiss fan that that's that was around in '74, 
that, oh, yeah, I was at the KC Kite Flying Contest. I mean, everyone <laughs> on this freaking town was not at the KC Kite Flying Contest. But if Kiss had played Madison Square Garden in 74, everyone in New York would be walking around, oh, yeah, I was at that show. <laughs> Oh, of course, shit, right? of course. <laughs> I mean, what was the? It was like over a hundred thousand. There were like a hundred thousand people there, but everybody claims they were there. It's kind of like yeah, Detroit nineties. It's, it's kind of like Detroit ninety six. Everybody, everybody says they were there too. Which, just as a little side note, I just drove by that old site not too not too long ago, maybe like a month ago, hmm. and uh, it's condos now where Tiger Stadium really? used to be. Because I, really? I was, I was, I was in Detroit. I guess it was oh seven. Or well, I drove. And it wasn't the last time I was in Detroit, but I drove by Old Tiger. My brother and I saw Kiss in um, Sault Ste. Marie in 2007, and then we drove back down to Detroit and saw the Detroit Tigers game at the New Tiger, where they play now at mm-hmm. Comerica Park. And we drove by Old Tiger Stadium; it was still there in 2007. And that like, I just wanted to drive by there for the same reason Andrew wanted to drive by Madison Square Garden he was in high school, because like you know, because for the same reasons. Mm-hmm. And I just it was just Tiger Stadium was just so decrepit and just like literally falling down as we were driving <laughs> by there. I think it was I think it was a pile of shit even when Kiss played there. I think it was Oh yeah, it, it, but that, that's why they built Comerica Park because Tiger Stadium was literally a pile of shit. So <laughs> I saw I saw Kiss at Cobo Hall in 2009 on the uh Alive 35 tour and it was right before I think it was the last show at Cobo Hall. Certainly okay. the last Kiss show there. Waiting in line for the bathroom. And some guy's like, fuck this. And he pushes us out of the way and just starts pissing on the wall. He goes, they're tearing this place down. I'm going to piss on the wall. I'm like, dude, I'm like you an animal? This is sacred ground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the the building is still there, um, Cobalt Hall, but the inside has been completely uh, demolished. I think it's like an event center now or something. Torn out. All the things, it. like Got all it. the seating and all the things that made it Cobalt Hall is gone. They gutted it. Yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. I have a question about your communications with the uh, Kiss Army Spain guys. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How did, how did that work? I mean, uh, do they, have, you know, the English, you know, the translation stuff between the two? I never had a problem. We, we communicated in perfect English, you know, whether oh, it was through Facebook messenger or through Facebook audio calls, I never had a problem understanding any of them. Okay. And, I met uh, one of them at um, Sarnia in 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, very nice guys, and yeah, yeah, communication was not. Was, like, yeah, I mean, Americans are the like the only people that speak one language. Americans are the only people <laughs> that speak lo- one the language, worst. and then and then Americans <laughs> are like, oh my god, you're speaking broken English. You must be stupid. Actually, yes. <laughs> they know their native language and they're learning a second language. So whether I'm the worst in English or not, I'm still you know I still know two languages. So. I never really got that. If people are like, "Oh, he's speaking broken English," I'm like, "Yeah, but the the guy's first language is Japanese. Like, you know, he speaks perfect Japanese." But like, anyway, country on earth. <laughs> this is the only country on earth that's like that. Um, but anyway, regardless, um, that's another podcast. Sir. <laughs> no, completely, completely different channel, different feed, eh? but no difficulty communicating with those guys uh, at all. Um, and they were, cool. you know, Mauricio was nice. And, and and I want to I want to read something that that was cool. So they announced this. Um, I don't know when the actual date that they announced the book. I mean, we had been working on this book since they had contacted me in April of 2020. That's when I took like all the pictures. Oh, was April all the way back then. Okay. Yeah. So they've been working on it uh, since then. Wow. Um, but I think that they. They sent me a picture of the cover when I was in New York City for the Tribeca Film Festival mm-hmm. for the Kiss Tree premiere. So I think they announced it in June of 20, 2021. They announced it in June of 2021. That's so that's right. when this page went up. They announced it. They go June 2021. They announced this. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, and I really, really, really want to mention this, and I really want to harp on this, they say that um, they go over all the pricing. And they say they announced the book in June of 2021, and they say the book will ship in September. Huh. And, it's, and it's September, and they're shipping now. And, yeah. and it's mid-September, and the book is in my grubby little. So they waited. So they worked. So and this wasn't an. This is a 250-page book. This wasn't an overnight thing. So I don't know how long they had been working on it before they contacted me in April of 2020. But let's just say they restarted work on it in January 2020. 
but they promised a date and it came out on that date. Is that correct? <laughs> what is correct is they completed the book <laughs> and then said that it is for sale now. Huh. So they completed it no, first before there was no putting it book. on sale. Ah. There was no book in April of 2020. Right. So when they announced, so in, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of slow. So in <laughs> June, when they announced this book, there actually was a book. It appears to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so they finished the book, and then they were like, "Hey, we finished this. Do you want this?" Oh. And people went. Yes, yeah, 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 we want that. So and what that's was when what, people started paying that? Well, what was even cooler about this is in August of 2020, <laughs> that's when they started printing test copies and they were doing videos and they were flipping through it and they go, "This is a test copy. The real McCoy oh, is back. being printed in wow. September." So, and that's the way to do it, my friends. That's the way to do it. Do you- do you know um, where they got a lot of their pictures from, or do they have as a fan uh, pictures, or a or, lot of most? I, I'm I'm willing own. to bet ninety percent of these are fan pictures, pictures that fans took at these mm-hmm. appearances. Uh, one of my good friends, Michael Altini, his pictures from Madison Square Garden '77 are in here, um, but a lot of the pictures are fan pictures, and then a lot of the other pictures are newspaper reprintings like pictures of newspapers and pictures of the merchandise so that's where a lot of the stuff came from so not um, a lot of licensing or that they would have well i don't to do, well, or we don't know we 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 don't know and that's the thing i mean licensing it that's that's that is what it is if you need to license an image the book would still be done and you would have to say i have to license these images but the book is done not, I will update you when there's something significant to update. Hmm. I'm just saying. Interesting. I'm just saying. Anyway, I also, so even though I bring swimmingly positive reviews about this book, I bring you a tidbit on the next book. Ooh, just, a little, just a little, a little bit. Uh, next uh, book. Taste. There is going to be a, a follow-up. I don't know if it's going to be presented by Kiss Army Spain. It is an idea that I'm working to bring to fruition. It is going to be another book this same size. And if everything goes well, probably you'll see it holiday season of 2022. Oh, okay. So basically all that's been done so far is basic outline, basic title, and just basic idea. So um, it's really it's going to pick up steam here in the winter months because what else am I going to do? Um, <laughs> nine, 19 feet of snow outside, so I'm going to just sit and work on a, a, a project at home. So um, that's all I'm going to say right now, what it is. But there is, there is going to be something else coming. So I had a hand in doing this, but this was a creation from the three gentlemen at Kiss Army Spain. Um, if there is another book that is going to be through Kiss Army Spain, um, hopefully I will be the fourth gentleman and not just a, you know, contributor, but I did contribute quite a bit to this book. Um, but, uh, I can't say enough good things about these, about the guys that put this together. You know, um, it was a home run with this book and, you know, every time you do one thing, you assume that they're going to be just a one trick pony and they're they're just going to do this. But this is, you know, your appetizer. And then this is your main course. And then let's, let's just, let's just really take a look at that. So this came out in 2018 and then here we go that this book is now here in 2021. Now I'm willing to bet that if there wasn't a global pandemic, this probably would have come out in 2020. So putting out these two huge projects within a two year time span is very impressive. I don't understand. Very, very <laughs> <laughs> what don't you understand? <laughs> uh, um, okay, but but okay. yes, but I mean this. It's this is. I, I every time I flip through it, I see something like, "Oh, what's that?" Or I I, I look at a detail and go, "I didn't know that," and, and it's just, mm-hmm. it's, 
I'm I'm really excited that I can say I had a part in this. I really am. You know. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, really, really, really am. So if you don't have this, again, you're going to want to visit the Kiss Army Spain website. Do a Google search that says Kiss Army Spain. Kiss destroys Madison Square Garden. If they are sold out through their website, you might be able to get a copy from kissmuseum.com located here in the U.S. So shipping might be a little cheaper for you if you're in the U.S. Um, if both places are sold out, check the secondary market. Um, but I don't know how many of these are going to be around. I mean, this is something that's that's freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. Yeah, if you go to that Kiss Army Spain, it, it takes you to the you know, like the Spanish uh, language. And you can click on the translate uh, when you do your search yeah, yeah. and, and you'll yeah. all be in English for you. <laughs> here's here's There's the funny email address on there. You can email here's, that. here's the funniest thing about that. So you link someone in the Kiss Army Spain and say, they go, I can't read Spanish. I'm like, dude, they have it in, yeah. every internet browser will translate it for you. Or what's even funnier is people are going, oh, how much is the, the currency in, 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 in U.S. dollars? Um, dude, you can just copy and paste it into Google and it'll tell you. Or if you're paying through PayPal, you just pay in their it'll currency. It for and you. It'll do it for you, man. So <laughs> yeah, they have it, and another thing, they do have it in both you know languages. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that is correct. I, I did forget to mention that you are correct on that. There is, and I don't know, I don't know what the copy breakdown is, how many available in each language as far as number of units go. But there, it is available in their native language of Spanish, and then it also is available in in English. Yeah. So you specify, like I had to when I ordered, I had to specify that yeah, I want the English. I would have been. I would have been. I would have needed a translator. If Stupid I American! He wants it in his own language. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, it's there's actually another another book. Uh, is it called Down on Your Knees? That's no, no. Familiar. Excuse me. It's called Partners in Crime. It's called Partners the in Crime. I believe, yeah. okay. I believe it's in Swedish, which is the 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 author's native language. This book looks incredible, but, but it's they, only in decided. Correct. It's only in their right. native language. So yeah. I didn't pick up the book. Um, I think Daniel I apologize. has that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, but Daniel's way smarter than me. He can speak English and Swedish, I believe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Probably something else, too. Probably. Probably something else, too. But us being Americans, we want to speak English and only English. And if you don't speak English as good as I do, you're stupid. Um, okay. <laughs> That's another right. part. That's right. Again, another episode. <laughs> however, however, <laughs> uh, uh, but that book was great too. I mean, you have these great fan books. There's also another book. I believe this is also a Swedish book called Kiss Classified. Do you guys have that? I don't think so. Uh, hold uh, on, hold on. Is it an old Please. book? Is it an old book? Yeah. If it's one, no, I have it. What's with this pink shoes right there? <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, those, are, that's, those are my roommates house. Okay. I, mean, I, I, right. was just, I didn't even didn't clear realize that. <laughs> anyway Kiss Classified this was uh, done by Carl Linus oh Johan yeah I have that one I that's do have guy. that one yeah that's a good this book this is a great book, this yeah. Is a great book. Yeah. Um, hardback yeah hardback and just just incredible in English too it's uh, I, mm. I want to read a, a selection because I was reading this the other night it comes Time with a cool post Bedtime stories with uh, Andrew Scambetti. Here we go. Exactly. Listen, these exclusive, all of, exclusive. On the so these, exclusive. Are, exclusive. these books <laughs> will dry any vagina in a quarter mile radius. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> not touching it. <laughs> it was during the hot in the sheet era. <laughs> Honey, you know about the hot in the sheet era, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I'm real excited I, about I that. Hear, I did hear a rumor that uh, there is a follow-up coming of the greatest show on earth in 2022. I'm looking forward to that. Um, let's see. Uh, give me one second. Obviously, you can tell this is not pre. Uh, <laughs> we are. Look we, There's a lot of we're, show. We're doing this, you know, by the seat of our pants here, people. <laughs> <laughs> this is not all planned. This is great for your car right now. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully he'll edit this out. Hopefully he'll edit this out. But there, there's a really funny story. <laughs> Good 
And we're <laughs> anyway. So I'm, I'm just gonna paraphrase. I'm gonna paraphrase. So All basically, right. I guess the, some of the authors they went into the studio where they were recording demos for the Hot in the Shade record. And the band was super jazzed about, oh, it sounds like early 70s Kiss, and this is great. And, mm-hmm. and, and the author was like, yeah, the band sounded really jazzed about the hot and the shady material. But <laughs> whatever we heard wasn't what they described. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it wasn't. That's, that's, that's great. That's about that's normal cool, but, for. <laughs> but this is, this, is a great, this is a great book, too, Kiss Classified. And it came with this cool poster, too. Uh, yeah. Gene Spitting Blood in 1980. Yeah, I have a cool poster that was in eighty. I can't remember. It came out of a magazine or something like that back then. Uh, where yeah. it looks like his head blew off. I mean, it's so much yeah. blood. Yeah, but I Crazy. mean, like this is it's just just getting back to the Madison Square Garden book. I mean, this is something that if you're if you're a Kiss fan, if you're a diehard Kiss fan, I'm going to say this is a must have. Really, is a must have. Ken, I know you've ordered it. Lonnie, have you ordered yours yet? Mom, um, I did. I'm I'm awaiting confirmation. There you go. See, I See, slacked so... off. I, I, I meant to get it right away when they announced it in June because I was really excited about it. It's like, oh, that's really cool and, and you, it, what a unique idea. Yeah. And then when the idea of doing the show came up, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I forgot, forgot all about, about that. So I was thinking about <laughs> yeah. Alan's book and other, you know, like, yeah, uh-huh. thinking about. I mean, there's going on in my life, and I was just like, oh shit, I forgot to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is. Um, you know the the guys at Kiss Army Spain. I hope I've I've helped you sell a couple copies. Uh, I really do because you they're guys nice have, guys. Too. They really are. You got they've been great to me, so I just really want to return the favor and, and and be great to them and and pass the word on 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 these great books. I mean, and if anybody from Kiss was watching too, I mean, these are the kind of projects that the fans want and that the fans would pay more money officially. Than they are paying for these things now. Imagine the kind of access the band could have given to to this book. Not to say that this book is missing anything, because it certainly is not. But we know that the band does have pretty deep archives as far as what's in there. Mm-hmm. So it would have been cool to to take a peek in that and maybe pull out some gems, and uh, you know put the band's stamp on it, and then maybe have Paul and Gene sign it. That would have been a lot cooler. Andrew, did you go to that garden show in two thousand three? I did. You did. I yeah. was really. Oh, the two, 2003 really gets like a bad rap because uh, it's, it's Peter and it's Tommy and it's kind of a weird time. Man, that's one of those shows that I was more excited about to see than any, though, was 2003 because I thought the band was done. I didn't think I was going to see him again. Same. And, man, when they came to town in 03, man, I was so excited to see him. I don't care that, it would, <laughs> that the only different song from the Farewell Tour set list was I Want You. I couldn't give a shit. I was seeing Kiss, and I never thought I'd see him again. Now, did so the you fact see that them... you saw him at the Garden in 03, that's really pretty cool. cool. Did you see them in the summer run and then the arena run in the fall? I only saw them in the summer run. Um, I was going through a little personal problems in my life, called a divorce, and I didn't get to see him <laughs> in the arena run in, in winter of, of, of uh, 2003. So I saw that they came to New Jersey in uh, August of 2003, which the tour started in August, if you can believe that, for a summer yeah, yeah, tour yeah. to start in August. That was yeah. super late. Anyway, so uh, it started in August, and I had just heard a bootleg of the Kiss Symphony. I know it was released in July of 2003, but when tickets mm-hmm. went on sale in April, May of 2003, That's I had just heard a bootleg of the Kiss Symphony, and I wasn't impressed. Mm. I wasn't impressed. So mm-hmm. I initially passed on tickets. Really? Oh. Like, Incredible, like Andrew Scampi yeah. casting on Kiss tickets. Yeah, that never yeah. happened. Anyway, I, I ended up going to the show, and I bought a ticket in the parking lot, and I got it was it was pretty awesome. I mean, a decent seat. And um, I remember going. To, I remember when Kiss came on; it was still light out. Thought that was weird, uh, but I ended up really enjoying the show. So when the tour started to be a successful tour and they were announcing more dates, I knew I had to go. So when I saw them at the Garden in 03, I was right on the side of the stage. And uh, it was a cool vantage point. I thought the band sounded cool. The bootleg video that's out uh, for it is awesome. It, hmm. it really gives you a good feeling of what it was like to be there. Paul sang Detroit Rex like he did in Australia in 1980. That was cool. Oh, wow. yeah. And it was Peter's last time playing the it was Peter's last time playing the garden. Sure. So nice uh, so it was it was very, very, very cool. It was very cool. So yeah, I saw them at the garden in ninety eight. They were presented with the gold albums for Psycho Circus. Okay. And and then I saw them at the garden in two thousand three. It it was cool. And I should have went in oh nine 
I was home and I was watching my friends, and then I sure. really, really should have went in 2019. I really should have went. Well, Julian, Julian, no, yeah, Julian. Julian, Julian did get me a lithograph, so I really appreciated him doing that for me. Oh, that's yeah, one of those cool lithographs. That's one of those cool lithographs. I yeah, remember it's, it's seeing it's that. Like that is York. really, really there's cool. A, there's a picture in here. You obviously can't see it. A lot of bands do those for every city. I wish they'd do that for every I, city. Yeah, I, I agree. That every city. That would be cool. So there yeah. is a lithograph right there. Yeah. And uh, the cool thing about the lithograph is it is there's pieces of it that are foiled. So yeah. any anytime I anytime I set up the kiss stuff, that's the first thing that comes out. I gotta put that lithograph up. I like the foil so stuff. In my, it's in my bedroom right now. I love that. I love that uh, that lithograph. Cool. So Well so it's listen, if you're on the fence, do head it. over to Kiss Army Spain. And they don't have it. Head over to Kiss Museum to see if you can get yourself a copy of the uh, Kiss Destroys Madison Square Garden, 1977 to 2019 book from the great folks at Kiss Army Spain. Well, there you have it. Well, there you have it. I mean, there it is. Um, we've had what a couple of great books. Want? A couple of great books. I and mean, what a great time for uh, you know Kiss fans uh, to still be able to you know buy a cool book with great pictures and oh. and. Uh, you know, it, uh, what do you want to say? Uh, reviews and yeah, and remembrances so, and and so on. Yeah. And collectibles and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It it's a very it's always a it's my in my opinion it's always a great time to be a Kiss fan. There's always something cool to consume. And there, and there always will be. It always will be. There, Even when always, the band stops touring, there will always be things like this. Yeah, there will always be cool things like this that that come out. Um, so. Take read the Kiss Army Masters, Kiss Army Spain destroys Masters for Garden 2019 book. Then after you're done, make sure you watch Kiss One Last Time live from New York City because you, you could see New York City footage in the film. Wow! There you have it. So, uh, so yeah, so to, to the folks Kiss Army Spain, thank you for putting up with me and featuring me in this book and letting me be a part of something that's so cool. I really awesome. appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Well, we've hit our pretty much our stopping point, uh, which is a normal around the hour or so. Um, so we'll wrap it up. Um, yeah. I, oh, oh, by the yeah, way, one thing I, I do, I do want to mention that that is a little bit uh, of an aside. I should have mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. um, they are selling the 2021 version six end of the road tour books on kiss online. Oh, are they? So uh, if Ooh, if you do need that, money interested. If you, if you need to pick tonight. it up there, so um, I did buy one and it is version six. So check it out and, and go pick it up. I have two uh, books, uh, two of the six. Uh, one number one and number like three. I don't know four or something. Anyway, um, but uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna stop. Uh, well, anyway, one, thank you. Yeah, thank everyone two. for watching the show as usual. Three. We're Thank you yet. for <laughs> Andrew and his five one more, one more. One more. stories. <laughs> and as he's showing up all these for the, the audio <laughs> listeners, you're not seeing this Andrew showing all his uh Tor books. But uh you know, no, thanks Andrew for for mentioning you know, bringing that up, uh, this book up and uh being on here and of course thanks Lonnie for always being here with us. Lonnie's always got to be show. here. And, and, and thanks to Julian for leaving the keys to the studio unlocked so that way we can do cool stuff yeah, like this. Yeah, thanks for the keys. Yeah, uh, for I did hear... There I might did be a scratch rumor. on the There side, might be a couple scratches. I did hear a rumor that Julian is vacationing in Tahiti with uh, the 1990s Marlon Brando. Oh. That's where he is right now. Oh, there you have it. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. But, hey, keep listening. Keep on YouTube. Mention, you know... Uh, if you have any comments on the show or the, about the book, if you got the book, you know, how is it? You know, how do you like it? Uh, you know, mention it on the board or on YouTube or any of the outlets that we, uh, you know, broadcast to. Um, and, and thank you once again. So from Lonnie, Andrew, and Ken, that's me. There it is. One more item. Wow. We'll wrap it up. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final, there are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today.
Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.